Hey there, I'm Zack Attack, and a lot of people are afraid of sharks, but only a handful of the 400 shark species get bigger than 10 feet long. But the biggest shark to have ever lived was Carcharodon megalodon, and some scientists estimate that megalodons got anywhere between 30 to 60 feet long. Thankfully, megalodons are extinct, or are they? In Steve Alton's book, Meg, a novel of deep terror, the plot finds megalodons to have survived the Pleistocene extinction by remaining down in the Marianas Trench. The sharks escape and start causing havoc worldwide, but could something like this actually happen? Well, we've been down to the bottom of the Marianas Trench before and returned unharmed. James Cameron is the most recent person to venture to the bottom of the trench, and he never laid eyes on any critters bigger than an inch. But some people believe that megalodons might not be trapped at all, that they may actually freely roam the ocean right now. But what evidence is there to support this thought? Well, none really. It's thought that Megalodon lived along tropical warm water coastlines. And we know this because their teeth, the only parts of them that fossilize, have been found along where ancient coastlines would have been. Their prey were cetaceans, those are whales, and we know that because we found cetacean bones with gashes on them indicating that a Megalodon fed on them. It's strange though. We found fossil evidence of megalodons, but nothing to indicate that they're still around today. But does this lack of evidence mean that megalodons are all gone? Some people have pointed out that the megamouth shark, which grows to 18 feet long, wasn't discovered until 1976, and say that it is evidence that possibly megalodons could still be around. Even still, other smaller shark species are discovered every couple years. But a megamouth shark eats plankton, like a whale, and they tend to only surface at nighttime from their deep water habitats. That's probably why they were only discovered so recently. Some other folks have argued that the coelacanth is evidence for how megalodons could still be around. A coelacanth is a fish that was thought to have gone extinct 66 million years ago until living specimens were discovered off the coast of Madagascar in 1938. But I think that a massive shark that lives in warm, tropical, shallow waters and eats whales and gets bigger than 10 meters long would be pretty difficult to remain undiscovered. But for the sake of argument, what would happen if a megalodon just suddenly appeared in the ocean today? What would go on? Well, upon the initial discovery of a megalodon in the ocean, the scientific community would be buzzing in a huge way. Many research groups would set out to capture video and tissue samples. Organizations would try to tag it similarly to how OSEARCH does to find out where the sharks were moving to. If it was found to be headed near a shore or beaches, they might be closed down as a safety measure. However, it's pretty unlikely that they would get close enough to consume your average beachgoer without stranding itself. But this doesn't mean that coast guards wouldn't be put on alert and groups like NOAA would use whatever resources they could to determine if this species was plentiful enough to classify on the IUCN. But most likely, because it was a new species with little known, it'd likely be data deficient. Any of the sharks consistently sighted in an area would generate tourists to go megalodon watching. But if, hypothetically, one of those tourists fell off the boat and found themselves swimming with a megalodon, what would happen? Well, we can't know for sure, but probably nothing. The megalodon was a massive animal, and expending the energy required to eat a tiny human probably wouldn't be worth it. You see this concept a lot with large aquatic predators. There's no sense in expending a large amount of energy on several tiny prey items only worth a few calories, whenever you could just use less energy on a single prey item with lots of calories. We call this the effort to reward ratio. Instead, megalodon would probably start hunting its old preferred prey, cetaceans, Cetaceans would be the only animals large enough to satisfy the shark's diet. And because we know that Megalodon preferred living in warmer tropical waters, anywhere from the equator to the subtropical wine would probably be their new habitat, and any cetaceans in those areas would be prime targets. This could end badly. If the Megalodons were plentiful enough, they could pose a serious threat to our already endangered whale species, like the right whales of the Pacific and Atlantic, blue and say whales. If hypothetically all the whales were eaten, things could turn ugly. Zooplankton populations could skyrocket and overall fish populations would explode to compensate for the lack of competition with the whales. Only for the baseline of the food web, the phytoplankton, to be entirely consumed by the outnumbering zooplankton. And when the base of your food web vanishes, 
your entire food web collapses. Hundreds of fishing industries could potentially collapse and hundreds, thousands, if not millions of humans would be without a job or a way to bring home food for themselves and their families. This is all just hypothetical and we'll never really know for sure. When it comes to the ocean, it's difficult to determine what would happen if a megalodon was suddenly found alive. But this idea kind of makes me thankful that they aren't around anymore. With all the mysteries of the ocean, it's got to make you wonder. Wonder and awe are great things to inspire people to take care of the things that are still around, like the various species of currently endangered sharks and whales worldwide. So keep wondering and stay curious.